So, uh, hello folks, my name is uh, Kevin Gallagher, well it's actually Kevin John, but it's a really long mouthful and, and, and very few people get it right, so don't worry about it, Kev is fine. Um, I'm a business transformation consultant, which is a very uh, bad title for someone that tells other people what I think is doing wrong. Uh, this is my Twitter handle, which is not something I use very often, but it is something that apparently needs to be on every single slide deck that I've seen for the last year. I'm. Uh, I'm Scottish, much like this man, so clearly I have to wear a kilt in the same way. Uh, I also am going to apologise that I get a little irate and angry. I grew up watching a, a lot of wrestling as a kid and adult and 30 year old and I emulate that quite a bit here. Um, I do swear a lot as well. I'm going to try and keep it down mostly because I'm being recorded and I don't want my mum to see it, but it does happen and it, it slips out quite a bit. Um, I also have a tendency to get on my soapbox about a couple of things, um, specifically things that I think that we are repeating the same mistakes over and over. We do that quite a bit in IT. Uh, and I also happen to think I'm awesome. So you may disagree with a lot of this. That's absolutely fine. I fully accept that even in a small room like this, I'm still not the smartest man in this room. And uh, the way my talks go are a bit like cosplay, in that there's lots of pretty things to look at, uh, but very little actually written down. Some bits you'll really like, some bits you really won't like, some bits will just confuse the shit out of you. I, I totally get that. I I'm not confident whether this is good or really, really bad, um, but, but it's there anyway. See, it's important to remember that, that, that those of us that get up to speak, we truly believe we're Stan Lee and we're preaching to the crowd. And I get, having been on this side, that everyone else thinks that we're the fat man in the Wolverine suit talking to people that actually know better than us. So I, I, I accept that. Speaking of fat men in Wolverine suits, fanboys. You'll see some things you like, which is awesome. You'll see some things that you won't like. And you'll see some things that you just didn't expect. Oh, and this is my upgraded slide of things I didn't expect, which I did in the plane. So that's unfortunate. Uh, uh, Jawas instead of Jaws, which still makes me laugh. Um, please don't get mad if you hear something that you don't like. Please don't get personal. That is always hurtful. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Certainly in a room like this, just shout and throw things at me. Uh, nothing really heavy. Um, or if not, you can post it to Twitter, and as soon as I work out how that system works, I will reply. Um, <laughs> there is a UK based joke here that says I'm easier to talk to than Michael Parkinson and I won't try and sell you Sun Life Insurance or try and sell you a pen. Obviously this being an Ubuntu pen, we now have to turn around and say this is the pen of the future and this year is going to be the year of the Ubuntu pen, even though for the last 12 years we all know that's something we just tell ourselves when we go to sleep. Um, as you can see, no writing so far. That's the way this is going to go for a lot of it. Uh, so this is the Emperor's New Clothes uh, for Jane Beyond. Obviously, you guys are here. This is uh, generally how I introduce that as the Emperor's New Clothes because I love Star Wars Lego. The point of this talk is to kickstart conversation for things we like and don't like and not to create consensus. So feel free to disagree with me. I say that a lot in the first opening minutes because people generally really do by the end. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, and I got like 45 minutes of people being really unhappy. So um, I, I originally modelled this talk for an American audience uh, based on this thing here, which is Snoop Dogg, 10 things that sound really cool when said by Snoop Dogg. And I thought, I could totally do that for an IT talk. And then I did them like this, and I thought, responsive design is irresponsible, browse crappy, why you have to be high to use HTML5 and all the rest of it. And I thought, not even Snoop Dogg can make them sound cool. So I'm not going to try at all. So my last two caveats. First one, this was originally built for an American audience. I'm not suggesting that a number of them are not the smartest people in the world. I'm just suggesting that they think Jesus is white and has machine guns. Also, some of this talk was written about two years ago. I try and update it from time to time, um, but some of it may seem really old and dated. And because I am a wrestling fan, I usually try and start out with this, with a big let's get ready to rumble. 
which if you're a, a wrestling fan or you were born in the 80s means a WWE Hall of Famer, uh, The Fink. But if you're born in the 90s or you lived in the UK, it means PJ and Duncan's Let's Get Ready to Rumble, Rock the Mic Psych. Let's get ready, let's get ready. Exactly. I sadly know the dance. <laughs> 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 So these are my cheesy design d uh, divider slides. This is um, apparently a band. I thought it was an album cover, and someone corrected me in my last talk. This is Get Cape, Wear Cape, Fly, which I think is just an awesome graphic. Um, but actually, I use it in terms of an upgrade for this, which is my Field of Dreams section, or as I call it, Browse Crappy, which really what I want to say is the bullshit that is, if you build it, they will upgrade. <laughs> Since the dawn of time, mankind has been scared of change. And I instantly know what you're thinking when I say that. You're thinking, oh, no. <laughs> you're thinking, Kev, what about Darwinism? Darwin said, it's not the strongest of the, it's not the strongest of the species, nor the most intelligent that survives. It's the one that is the most adaptable to change. Which is a brilliant quote. So, we as IT people, on the whole, we deep down don't believe that. You know, we believe that we embrace change. We love iPhones, we love uh, Google uh, Android phones, we love everything that's brand new and betas and testing things out. And I love my MacBook Air, even though I, it was crazily expensive for what is a speaking spell. The reality is, like Donna, we're wrong. So we believe that this is agile and change, and it's not. It's wax on, wax off. This is change. <laughs> and this scares people a lot. Certainly normal people. That's right, you know, that, that's the thing. And, but I say this, and a lot of people go, yes, but that's out there in the real world. We're in IT, and this sort of thing doesn't scare us. Yes, but this scares us. A lot of people got upset about this for no apparent reason. Exactly. So the first bit of writing, and I apologize for it. Ch -ch Changes, which I'm not going to sing. Humans hate change. We, we, we really do. We, we've thousands of years of history that say we, we, we have to be brought kicking and screaming into everything, including the world. Um, in order for any change to take place, there needs to be a positive return on investment. This only occurs when the cost of change is less than the cost of not changing. That seems really obvious, but you'd be amazed the number of people you got pointing that out to. Lack of change is not through laziness and fear, which is the number one thing I hear from IT people. And change decisions are all about context. You need to make a, a decision based on a particular thing and not a wide uh, a wide-ranging decision that will cascade. Basically changes the uh, carrot and stick effect. In the carrot section, in orange. <laughs> it's a really bad orange joke, but still. So this is Chris Hillman, who is a um, uh, evangelist for Mozilla, uh, specifically on Firefox. He's a very intelligent, very lovely man, who is uh, also much smarter than me, so he'd, he'd do well in this room. Um, but one of the uh, websites that Chris runs is this one, which is HTML5 for XP.com. Uh, and he's got a list of about 10 things that, why we should uh, go around to our mother's house and our grand's house and, and upgrade their machines to a different browser than the one they actually want to use and are used to using just to make, um, to make their life better. But here are uh, Chris's reasons for making their life better. If they upgrade to a different browser, they can get rounded corners, gradients and drop shadows without graphics, which it, clearly that's what my mum wants when she wakes up every morning. It's not, it's not a cup of tea. Rich graphics and visualizations using Canvas and SVG. Ooh. Uh, games that don't ask you to install plugins, uh, which is great. Uh, we had to get rid of that problem. I had to lock down, not a, a word of a lie, I had to lock down my grand's computer because she used to click through on the pictures that were people were really smiley, not realizing that was porn. Uh, so I, for one, was really, really fucking glad when, when all these pop ups came out and went, you need to install this plugin because I was eventually like, you don't. Uh, so I live in fear of that happening. Uh, 3D ga graphics and support for any font, because that's what we need, more fonts. Uh, and drag and drop and touch support for tablets. Now, uh, I realize I'll make lots of mistakes in this thing, so it's wrong for me to point out uh, this to Christian. Um, but I just, ha hands up, who has an iPad that runs Windows XP? <laughs> no? Great. So not so much of a problem. Anyway, this is, this is the thing. Um, 
Bubble Bobble. This is uh, a great game from the 80s. It's a game, uh, rather than puberty, this is where I, I really worked out I was a man. The first time I was able to blow a bubble and then bounce on it, and then bounce on another bubble. It was like the, the, the light bulb went off, and, and then I realized there was hair. I was like, shit. Here's the real thing, though. Who gives a fuck? Al Bundy, a particular hero of mine. Um, but really, all of the great things that Chris has said and a lot of the developer advocates have said, and a lot of people say for reasons to upgrade your browser and everything else, no one really cares. Uh, outside of us, because we see positive aspects, your average person on the street doesn't really care as long as they get the information they want. And the reality is that they can do that in most browsers without caring whether it's downloaded graphics for a rounded corner or not. Finally, Christian <laughs> ends his website by saying this. After three pages of It's All About the User, his footer says this. This website is powered by the annoyance and the memory of hours wasted in IE6 to try and replicate bugs instead of playing with new cool technology. I get that. I think we've all tried to <laughs> face the pain of IE6. The point is... This is not a good reason for my grand to upgrade so that Christian doesn't have to deal with IE6 anymore. And I think that's a large problem that we have in IT that we've not managed to work out yet, is how we convey to others the positive aspects of this. So this is, was going to be a group exercise, but, but we can skip it because I'm the only one with the mic. Um, it's, I generally do this. What positive reasons can you give your grand to convince her to upgrade her browser? Um, Let's do this for 30 seconds, just audience participation scares people. <laughs> that, that, that is a good reason. Yeah, that is a good reason. Grant, if you do this, you'll have to phone me less for support. That's, that's a, that is, that's a totally good reason. Basically, you just take the laptop, just update it. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. So that's Grant. So, I did, so here's a bad story, we're running out of time. Uh, but I, did, I did that to my mum. And then she phoned me and she said... Um, what happened? My browser changed. And I was like, yeah, but it's, it, it's better, it's faster, it's all the rest of it. And so, exactly, yeah. Auto update's great. I mean, it was, listen, I got no problem with that. But so basically, I moved my mum from IE6 to Chrome, and she went, where's, where's the buttons? And I was like, but this is a better browser. And she went, it's better for you, but I like buttons. And I, so I was like, okay, that's great. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah. Great. See, so that the, no, that's really good. That's real positive. If you're doing something that's intensive, you need a new browser because your old one won't handle it. That's a total positive. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, now onto the stick aspect. So this is actually a picture of a whip uh, because if you go to Google Images and type stick, it's the most boring pictures you'll ever find. And it's lots of stick insects, and I can't fucking see them. It's lots of insects that look like wood in trees, and I, I, I wasn't going to put that on the slide. So it's, it's a whip instead of a sick. Upgrade now! Caution, zombies, Osama bin Laden, viruses, fucking God knows what else, but it's coming down the internet to get you, and, and probably zombies as well, did we mention zombies? Uh, and, and this is it. We, we try and strike fear into people that, that something really bad is going to happen if they don't upgrade their browser. Uh, I remember having, again, uh, with my mum, because I moved to Firefox, um, I remember having the conversation with it that said, just so you know, this is going to happen every six weeks because they've decided they're going to update their browser every six weeks now. And she went, all oh, right, and, and how long is my old browser going to be viable for? I was like, a second after the six weeks. <laughs> and she was like, son, I'm 67. Are, are you seriously telling me that, that technology is outdated every six weeks? I was like, I could move you to the nightly, but I think you'd be really pissed off. <laughs> So, so that's it. So fear. We strike fear into people like sh bad shit's going to happen. And then also my, my favorite TV show ever uh, from Battlestar Galactica. We also try and strike fear into people that says technology X won't work if you don't upgrade. If you don't change to this, then HTML5 will come along in about 17 years whenever Hixie finishes the spec, which is never going to happen. And then, and then and that will replace Flash because we've only been saying that for 12 years, but it's going to happen tomorrow at the same time as Ubuntu is going to be the biggest platform. You know, we keep giving people this fear that shit's going to change without them if they don't upgrade. And some of it's true. So group exercises, again, we're not going to do this. Uh, so what negative reasons can you give your grant to upgrade your browser? We all know we can strike fear into people to do it. But, oh, sorry. Yeah, go for it. Porn pop-ups. Porn pop-ups. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's she just loves, she loves seeing smiley people. 
<laughs> it's, so, it's so bad. Go for it. Different icons on the browser. Yeah. Still got buttons, but I like the old ones better. Yeah, exactly. This, this is it. So uh, one of the things that I've, I've found in IT is that we're really good at pointing out all, all the fear aspects of it, because you can really get into them. But it's been a long time on the web since we've been able to give someone a real positive reason for upgrading their browser. You know, like video or flash or, or, or whatever the last you know checkpoint was we, we've kind of just moved into this we're gonna just continually upgrade slowly kind of thing and that's great for us but it's really bad for your average user because we can't sell it to them the, the cool reasons for doing so so again this is uh, my second favorite TV show the IT crowd uh, so there's a lot of slides with just have this in it um, but we in IT have a tendency to, to strike people with the fear aspect of it and that hasn't kind of worked over the years so we've now decided to change tact <laughs> Pop-ups. Love them. Um, something's new on Netscape, that's always good to know. <laughs> yes. So, funnily enough, and this is very sad, I, I held an, um, an RFP the other day and one of the large uh, CMS vendors um, had put in that there's, their CMS supports Netscape 6. And I was like, oh, I'm going to make you show me that. <laughs> I'm going to make you show me that on a lot of fucking machines. That's it. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, lots of pop-ups. We all hate pop-ups. And uh, more viruses found, click this, and all the rest of it. We have spent a large portion of IT and our personal time convincing our families, friends, idiot co-workers, and all the rest of it that this is not a real thing. This is, you know, a crazy pop-up. Don't click on pop-ups. So I was ecstatic last year when WordPress, which I'm going to bash quite a lot on this because you're a very Joomla crowd, uh, decided to do this. Big fuck off pop up every time you log in that says you're not using the browser that we've decided that we want you to use and they're kind of wondering why this isn't working and you're like we've preached to people for years that that don't click on pop-ups don't click on big red things that say update this and security things and so obviously the thing to do is to slap a big one on the middle of your fucking dashboard because that's what we've done. We have changed folks from attempting to be helpful to people to attempting to say, fuck it, we know best. Just come along with us. And, and here's, here's my problem with that. Again, because I'm not the smartest person in the room. Who the hell do we think we are? And honestly, if, if something works for our users, why the hell do we want them to change it just to make our life easier? Why, do he, why does Chris want people to change it so that he doesn't have to worry about coding for IE6 anymore? The reality is, we have no idea who our users are. We have roughly, we have analytics, we can tell a lot of things, but we cannot see the person at the other end of the keyboard. And even if we could, users have a tendency to do what the fuck they want anyway. They seriously, like we can set rules for people, people work round rules. Change, change is very hit and miss. You know, change is, is stormtrooper aim, and return on investment is individual is measured by each and every individual, and it's not a collective. Transformation doesn't happen very quickly. <laughs> And just because you think something's a perfect fit, doesn't mean that everyone else will. <laughs> if you want to create real change, then you have to give people something useful to them. <laughs> you have to give people something they intrinsically want. But more importantly, you can't just give them some shit that you think is cool. If we continue to build stuff for just our latest browsers, <laughs> then realistically, we're just going to end up playing with ourselves for the next couple of years. Okay. In terms of change, like this one, uh, the question is, is the juice worth the squeeze? That's the first one. <laughs> I try and intersperse them with some shorter ones. Sharon Stone from Basic Instinct, so the word here is basic. A battle standard, so this is my basic standard chat. These are the slides I've had to put in recently because my previous ones for the American audience were this. This is a basic vampire. This sadly is the standard vampire, which really just makes me want to kill myself. I, I don't get it. I, I, you know, I get the whole loving a vampire thing, grand, no problem, but a vampire that hides from the sun 
because he sparkles and looks awesome. It's just, it pains me, pains me. Anyway, uh, so basic is not the same as standard. This is not a semantic change. This is something that we on the whole need to get uh, our, into our heads. Basic is something that you can't do without. And standard is what users, they think they can't do without. I used to use loads of examples about Facebook and that, but given that it changes the way it looks and works every three weeks, I, I, I've just changed it to this. Andy really wanted Buzz, but he needed Woody. That's it. <laughs> uh, I love this one. So this is me growing up in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, this this one causes a lot of tension. So this is responsive design is irresponsible. I really like responsive design as an idea. Uh, I just think that we're doing it in a really, really bad way. So uh, for those that don't know what responsive design is, uh, it's the ability to apply different CSS styles based on media queries, i.e. Uh, if it's on the screen and the device with is this change, if it's an iPhone, display it this. Uh, when we talk about responsive design, we're kind of masking what we're actually talking about for most people. Mobiles. Responsive design allows designers and front-end developers to react to mobile devices in a way they weren't possibly able to before. This is my old website. This is what it looked like on, on, on a mobile thanks to um, responsive design. It's, it looks awesome, right? No, nah, it, it really didn't. Anyway. Here's the, the key thing. Responsive design is based on hypocritical and contradicting bullshit. I'm going to explain why in a sec. First, let's make sure we call a spade a spade. When we say responsive, we're really talking about mobile. Or specifically, the same content but with a different design. It works in the premise that the only difference between a desktop and a mobile is screen size, which to me seems really deft. Non-desktop users rarely use uh, a human-computer interaction device, i.e. a mouse or a keyboard, uh, are almost always looking for different information, and more importantly, unless you have a really long cable, uh, your mobile device is rarely on broadband. I'm also a Star Trek fan. So this actually came out of the, uh, the end of uh, Star Trek The Next Generation Season 7, which is about the proof of paradox. All good things. Um, it's not about screen size, it's about context. We had screen size specific websites 10 years ago, so it's definitely not about context. Uh, it's about context, not about screen size. Except the only way to test for context is to test for screen size. So in order for it to be not about screen size, it needs to be measured and identified by screen size. <laughs> Yet apparently, the 200,000 people that bought Ethan Marcote's book uh, have, haven't seen this yet. This, this is apparently going to be news to a lot of people. So screen size is not equal to context, but somehow context is exactly one-to-one -one with screen size. Which scares me. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a good bit. Rejoice. In the CSS 2.1 spec, it did include a really good context variable, which would solve a lot of these problems. The me uh, actual media query, where it was handheld, uh, media, s handheld, screen, TV, and print. The problem was that these companies, small companies, no one's ever heard of, clearly know nothing about phones. These got together after four years and went, you know what, that's just not working because people don't want the same data but in a different design and it's really fucking with us. So these companies, people don't like it. Uh, people don't want a visual change. People want a data and architectural change. So um, it was specifically Nokia uh, and Google that, that said it originally. Google said it when they were coming into the phone market that that's what they were going to do. So they were no longer going to support that particular media query. And funnily enough, two months later is when the um, a, a, a List Apart article came out. So clearly people have jumped on that bandwagon. This is a really long sentence and I'm not going to read it out. Um, it's basically saying that we map screen sizes to context and it's all predefined and this is that we do exactly what we said we weren't doing. And more importantly, according to the, the four companies up there that I think know a little bit about phones, that's also what our users don't want. Lolcats. Uh, the actual point of the, uh, the internet, I believe. But more importantly, it's the irony in images. Responsive design was invented for designers and front-end coders to not be reliant on developers for multiple versions of website. This is, this is genuinely why they love it. And for single houses, it's awesome. But one of the major downfalls of responsive web design is images. Inline images work best for responsive design because you can use this little code and they'll stretch and it'll be awesome. 
The problem is this means it's the same image on all versions of the site. So if you put a high quality image, it'll take ages to download on a mobile. If you put a low quality image, it'll look crap on a desktop. If you put uh, a low quality image and the four people that actually bought the new version of the iPad will run around on Twitter going, fuck, it doesn't look as good on, on our, our particular device, which we now have to make sure that we write a spec to handle. None of these work well, so you have to use a technical solution to request the right type of image. Um, I don't know if anyone saw, but three days ago there was uh, two new uh, proposals put forward uh, for the CSS3 spec and the HTML5 spec, which is apparently um, in working draft version four years ago, as to how they can handle this. And this, this is genius, and I love it, because it's a really good, simple solution. As long as you consider simple of, you have to rechange your HTML, so that the CSS knows what uh, knows what it's doing, then the JavaScript can work out exactly what type of browser it is, and then it sends a different request to to your server to try and work out to make sure that um, this is how it works on a mobile device, as opposed to you know what, leaving the spec as is, saying this works, and actually just building a mobile version of the site that's actually tailored to what your users want when they come on that device. Responsive design is same data, different display. It can't take into consideration bandwidth, platform, device, purpose, context. It really wants to. It's a, it's a really nice idea, um, but it, all it knows is the screen size. Um, but, but I didn't read the end of that, sorry. <laughs> Uh, it has to be about information architecture. It can't be done by CSS alone. We need to stop uh, shoehorning shit into the CSS specs, or we'll end up in a place where each browser supports only the code they want to, and only in the way they want to. Or, in other words, we'll find ourselves here again. <laughs> Where's the next one? Ah, okay, so I can start going through these fairly quickly. Uh, so, why you have to be high to use HTML5? First, flash, ah, savior of the universe. Flash. So, it's about flash. One of the great uh, things that's always said to me is, oh, you need to use HTML5 because flash is dying. You need to use HTML5, it's gonna kill flash. And uh, all, all this really awesome stuff because somehow everyone now hates flash. Uh, when it's actually really good at what it's designed for. So in the HTML5 spec, the, the new one, we have uh, the Fantastic Four for video. We have the AUG player, we have MP4, we have VP8, and then slightly hidden at the back, the one that we don't like to talk about is, of course, Flash. So in, which I, I just love. So in order to get rid of Flash from the thing, and one of the real aspects is you should upgrade everyone, uh, everyone should move to HTML5 because we're getting rid of Flash. Uh, in all actual fact, in the spec, the fourth option, the default option for the video player to get rid of Flash is, of course, Flash. <laughs> Therefore, totally negating a large portion of that argument. Instead, what we should be doing with HTML5 is using the thing that works for us in particular. Flash, as opposed to the HTML5 banner. I've seen the future. It's in my browser. This is not true unless you're on Match.com. <laughs> so, HTML5 spec. Work started in earnest in 2004. The first draft was published in 2008. We're four years later. We still have no definitive spec. Let me tell you how we got to this stage. In the beginning, the W3C released a spec. And it was quite draconian. The what group got together and they went, hey, we're also draconian, but somehow we're also cool. So they've got their buddy Christ image. This is the New Testament equivalent. The what working group, the, uh, well, the what group, um, they came up with a new spec, which is awesome, and, and Google's ran with it. There was a lot of fighting for a little while, but it was kind of pretend fighting because everyone liked each other. Then, then one side won. Um, I just want to remind the case any Chelsea fans did come to hear that, that we did it like 50 years ago. But, <laughs> Thanks for playing. Uh, yes, so one side won, and that's great. And then the, the, the two became one. The specs merged. And that left us with a bit of a problem. It left us with one, one maniacal, draconian asshole writing the whole thing. Lots of people were there, wanted other people to do it. Everyone had their hero. Everyone had their hero to try and go, we should write this in. We should, we should add more things to it. But they were all turned down by a man on a power trip. Let me give an example of, of where we're struggling. Time. 
time is a really simple HTML5 tag. It is absolutely semantic. Guess what? It tells you time. Uh, it, it's the most obvious, lovely little tag and totally non-contentious. Of course, that made it the, uh, the spawn of the devil to Mr. Hixie, who decided that time should be taken out of the HTML5 spec and replaced by something much more obvious. Data. Apparently, this, confusing, this, clear as day. It's, it, we're officially at the stage where the man has done a Fonzie and jumped the shark. He decided to replace everything with data, as I said, without really forgetting that the tag, everything's data, metadata's data, and all of this went on. There was a big argument for a while when this man, Bruce Lawson of, of uh, Opera, uh, a very wonderful person who uh, likes to wear mankinis but doesn't shave when he does them, which is very embarrassing. Uh, he he kick-started something off. There was a very big flame war. Um, eventually someone won after three months and uh, it got changed back to time, but with a, a slight um, attribute change so that it's no longer readable by humans, which is just fucking ridiculous. Anyway. I, what I want, and the reason that I'm telling you that the HTML5 is not going to be as good and as ready as we think it is, is because we need to spend time throwing out all the wars uh, and actually agree on what we want to do and roll out a single spec. And then all this cool stuff we're trying to do, let's just call it HTML6 or the next thing or a work in draft. Because the reality is right now, the HTML5 spec is purely vaporware and it's totally not ready. All right, cool. Does anyone know what this TV show is? Okay, so it's an American TV show called Justified, and it's very, very cool. Uh, he basically just shoots people all day. So this is why you're the client from hell. Has anyone seen Client from Hell, the website? Yeah. Great. Okay, so it's a list of um, IT guys and agencies and all the rest of it complaining about how stupid clients are for not knowing things we've not told them, which is, is, is brilliant. This is my favorite one. Client, I don't like the type. What don't you like? It goes to one side, you mean left. He's like, yes, it's range left. How do you want it? The client says, I want it to be the same on both sides. And he goes, oh, justified. And he went, I don't justify anything. I own the fucking company. <laughs> and this was posted on there because the guy in particular was like, how did that client not know what justified meant? Well, because no one told him. He's a mechanic. He doesn't need to know this. So jargon-free isn't enough. We still we still treat people as if they have what we consider to be a base level of knowledge. When I again, when I talk to my mum about phones, or when I talk to my gran about porn pop-ups, I need to put them in terms that she understands, and we we need to do that on the whole as an industry. So this was a, a, a sign that was up at a help desk. Um, if the help desk thinks your question is stupid, we will set you on fire. <laughs> and we laughed. So this was set up at Napier University in Edinburgh when I came in, uh, and we had three people working at the desk, and they had two queries in a week, and they didn't know, they didn't know why. <laughs> I'm like, I think this is probably why. Grant, can we please stop with buzzwords? They genuinely make me sick. We think that this is our client when we talk to them. It's an old guy, yes, but he's cool, he wants a website, he was there in the 80s, he knows He-Man, he's awesome. But the reality is, this is more likely to be our client. It's a gun-toting nut who's sold some of his Nintendos and, and, and guitars, and he's now wanting a website. Just because you use a word one way does not mean that it's the same way for everyone else. More importantly, Genuinely, this is all about perception. I love Zeldman. I do. Jeff's, Jeff's really awesome. He's a really, really genuinely lovely guy. But can we please start treating people like they're normal and not start treating people like everyone knows what Zeldman knows? In particular with open source, the only way that we're going to get open source and open web to thrive beyond where it is, and it's doing really well, is if we stop shooting down clients and our families for not knowing everything we know and using the terminology we know. It's just really causing a problem for people like me that try and sell open source stuff. More importantly though, from Superbad, don't be a dick, it'll kill you. All right. <laughs> oh, my favorite slide. Excellent. Okay, so, good developers don't make Jedi Knights. I can't believe that as an adult at 35 I have to go around telling people this, but I, I do. What makes a good developer and what makes a good Jedi Knight? Uh, it was going to be a group exercise, but instead, developers of computers, Jedi Knights have um, droids and lightsabers. 
In the real world, what makes a good project manager and what makes a good tester? Genuinely not lightsabers and it's usually different skill sets is where I'm going with this. This is the point in time where I usually ask if anyone has actually applied for a job with Ninja, Jedi, Rockstar, something else in the title. And okay, one. That's good. Nor normally I got like a lot of bum shuffling on the seats and no one looks up. So it's harsh because everyone in this room is nice and thin, but this is your average developer sitting home playing Warcraft. Just because you dress like Spider-Man does not actually make you Spider-Man. And by the same token, just because you have a plastic lightsaber does not actually make you a Jedi. <laughs> I'm going to skip this little bit of, of, of WordPress commentary a sec. But basically, how many pro uh, project managers are there in the WordPress team? Zero. How many testers are there? Zero. And yet they released the beta with the menu not working in IE because for the 12 of them, everyone thought everyone else had tested it, which is ridiculous. David Bowie was very disappointed in them. Also, just as a rule, uh, they also have zero developers, but they do have four happiness engineers and two tech ninjas, and that's clearly working very well. Doesn't it seem really obvious as to where the problem lies with a lot of this? Oh, that's the wrong slide. Oh, okay. Well, here's a very cool Simpsons graphic. Basically, it's really harsh to say, but we need to start using the terms that people can understand. We're engineers, we're developers, we're all the rest of it. We need to be able to relate what we do outside our own company, and that doesn't happen if you're a Jedi, a rock star, a ninja, or, or something else. Uh, I'm, I'm running out of time, so we're going to skip this one, because I spent too much time laughing. Sorry. Oh, excellent. Does anyone know who this is? Oh, so that's that's not bad. I'm all right. This, so, this, how sad do I look? This is Galvatron. This is. <laughs> the, I know. Yeah, you are. You're you're very close. So this is actually the upgrade of Megatron. So that, that, that's right. You know. That, so that that's good. Uh, yes, exactly. That's it. You're, you've not aged yourself at all. So. Uh, <laughs> And we're not judging. So this is uh, upgrades of mass destruction. And, and basically, this is me talking about change and change management. Can anyone spot the change? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. So this change has a positive effect for her, we, uh, I presume. We don't know if it's a positive effect for, effect for Darth Vader or not yet, because he doesn't quite know he's her father yet. That, that might work. But uh, the, the change has had a really bad effect for him. That's one really unhappy man feeling quite uncomfortable. <laughs> The point is this. A change that results in no net increase is not an upgrade. A change that is neither forward nor backward compatible is not an upgrade. A change that alienates a percentage of users is not an upgrade. It's a change, and that's cool, but an upgrade is a very different thing. And just to prove it, this is not an upgrade. It's awesome, and you may love playing in it, and you can probably take it home, but you do not want to go to war in that. Pinocchio, Everybody Lies, my favorite show that got cancelled this year, Lies, Damn Lies, and Open Source Statistics. Disco Stu tried to point out that disco sales were going through the roof in 76, and ergo they would continue on forever. We do quite a lot of that when it comes to open source. And uh, just to clarify again, um, this will be the year of Ubuntu. But this is my favorite um, XKCD comic ever. Sometimes when I wake up, I'm caught in a horrible grip of perspective. It may be the jewel of open source, but Firefox is just a browser. It shows web pages. What the hell is wrong with us? I love this because we get really caught up in open source and browsers and all the rest of it. We're here to talk about technology, and it's great. But the reality is, uh, you know, Firefox is just a browser. Let, let's, let's move on. <laughs> no way. Oh, great. Last one. This is the Kobayashi Maru. This one is, is, is a slight attempt to make you laugh um, just before we go. So this, this is Kirk. Um, we're not sure if that's a, a wig. We, we're presuming not. Uh, this is actually my dressing gown. And I've, I've been using this slide for about a year and a half. And then someone came up and went, is that a spot? Ah, mortified. Uh, but I'm not photoshopping it. So, the great management divide. Uh, this is where I think Star Trek teaches us a lot of lessons, especially if you watch it as much as I do. Every week on Star Trek, Kirk would say, Mr. Scott, how long until something? About three weeks, Captain. But 
a typical manager, but I need it in four minutes. I, I promised it to the client, and we, we went for some drinks. It's terrible. Uh, yeah, Scott went, uh, I just can't do it, Captain. Kirk went, but I need it, Mr. Scott. And Scott says, oh, you need it. Oh, I didn't hear you right. I'll just flick this switch. There you go. Uh, shields up. The Star Trek management perspective. We have a generation of managers, uh, more than a generation, who have been brought up to believe that management is always right, authority trumps expertise, delivery is always the most important KPI, and any issues can be overcome in any time period as long as I use the word, I need it. Scotty knows exactly where to look to solve the problems. Scotty has the expertise to fix the issue. Scotty is willing and able to get his hands dirty. Managers panic. Worse, managers try to micromanage, which usually ends up in engineers laughing. <laughs> I get that. I can say that now as a manager and a failed engineer. I used to laugh at this guy, and I now am this guy going, what? What the fuck's Ruby? In the short term, ignore Kirk and listen to Scotty. That should please almost everyone. Sometimes you just need to hold Kirk back. And, and if he's annoying, choke him. The great engineering divide, though. Every week on Star Trek, Kirk, Mr. Scott, how long until X? Oh, about three weeks, Captain. Why is it taking so long, Mr. Scott? Well, I, I, I just want to code this right. We want to move to OOP. Uh, it's a good chance to try out Ruby. We've not done that before. And if we also upgrade Apache, we can blah, 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 blah. And, and on the reasons why the engineer wants to do something in the slightly longer but apparently better way. And then Kirk says, can't we just use our existing framework? We, we, we only spent two years building it. In fact, you, f you finished it yesterday. Why are we moving to Ruby today? That just seems like crazy. Just fucking do it. Uh, so the Star Trek engineering perspective. Uh, we have generations of engineers who've been brought up to believe that management are idiots. They're, they're probably not wrong about that. Uh, but that expertise trumps authority no matter what. Quality is always the most important KPI, and it's more important to do it right than do it fast or worse, even on time. But here's the thing. Kirk went on away missions. Kirk spoke to, lo uh, to lots of departments. Kirk apparently spoke to Star Trek. Stargate, which is funny. Uh, Kirk spoke to um, his bosses. Kirk spoke to his competitors. More importantly, Kirk spoke to his clients, the people that engineers just couldn't understand. The engineer, on the other hand, sat on his own. He spent all day talking to his computer. And more importantly, in Star Trek V, I think it was, uh, when walking around his marvelous creation, the engineer said, I know this ship like the back of my hand, and then proceeded to walk into it. <laughs> in the long term, ignore your engineer and listen to your manager. They have slightly better long-term views. Sorry, if of the engineers. Sometimes engineers really need to be held back from doing that latest cool thing. Yeah. Keep an eye out for these two members of staff, though. This is the, the jokey bit. The, the very logical one. <laughs> Do not let him near your clients. Uh, and also, just be wary, he can sometimes be up his own arse. Uh, there's also the one that questions everything. Uh, <laughs> they sadly try and brute force solutions way more than they should. Um, they are really good at spotting issues, though, before the lawsuit comes in. Um, and although they may have a god complex, sometimes they can actually pull it off. So they need to be well managed. Ensure your team is the right balance. Listen to different people. Remember why Spock's second in command and not leading the thing. But remember why Bones can take control at any time. And more importantly, and I can't say this enough, one woman on your team is not enough. It's no longer the 60s. This isn't Mad Men. Uh, have a well-balanced team, he says, looking at lots of white people. Uh, great. So, finishing up, this is Bill Hicks, uh, my, my uh, personal hero, though he doesn't know it. Bill Hicks, 316. Some people believe they're Napoleon. That's fine. Beliefs are neat. Cherish them. But don't share them like they're the fucking truth. Beliefs are not the truth. And sometimes in our industry, we have a tendency to do that. Like, responsive design's going to save us all. It's, you know, it's going to cure cancer. It's brilliant. A man that I used to love that has gone down so much in my estimation. Thank you to Jar Jar. Actually, I, I, I kind of redeemed himself with Phantom Menace 3D, and then I saw this. That just upset me. So now what I do when I go into things, I say, 
What would George Lucas do? And if the answer sounds anything like this, we just rule it out. <laughs> so coming to the end, this is also uh, my, my favorite Lego version of the end of Star Wars. You may have some, seen some things here that, that y you like. You may see some things that upset you. You may have seen some things that you're, you're kind of intrigued about but may have shocked you. And you just want to know a little bit more. If you only take one thing away from this, uh, before you go running into your next project, is doing the good thing, i.e. punching Justin Bieber, the same as doing the right thing, i.e. wearing a JLS condom? And uh, the answer, of course, is rarely. And that's me. Thank you very much. So I think I ran over time-wise, but does anyone have any questions? Awesome. We can move on. Thank you for your questions. Uh, it, it's really appreciated. Uh, I flew in this morning, so uh, I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon drinking. Uh, if you want to come find me, we can chat over a beer. Thank you very much. Awesome.